Uh, yeah, Simon Meal, the person who's sharing their story today. Um, I heard a few things uh, this morning um, that hopefully you'll see uh, weaving through what I'm going to share with you. Um, that is, one is God's covenant, his faithfulness, um, his, uh, his promise, um, his commitment to each and every one of us here and those not here, uh, whether we actually accept it or not. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to say a quick prayer to hopefully uh, slow this down. Because um, this is, uh, uh, Dolly, I'm not sure where you went, but this is outside of my comfort zone. Um, I'm going to not be shy today uh, for another 40 minutes or so, hopefully less. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Um, and thank you for the folks that are here who... Um, who are here, um, who have their stories of their own, who have struggles and triumphs, uh, tragedies, joys, um, loves and losses. Um, I pray, Lord, that uh, you would calm my heart, you would sit with me, um, and you would let your love for each and every one of us uh, shine through I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Um, yeah, so I'm Emil, full name, Emil James Farfan. I am currently the head of the Farfan household. Uh, I was born Emil James Scott. Um, my parents met in uh, the Navy. In, uh, they met in Virginia, moved to California. We're restationed in California where I was born. Uh, again, Emil James Scott. Um, things happen, marriage didn't last long, uh, my mother met another man, had my little sister Kelly, um, and then she, her, her enlistment ended and we moved back, uh, to where she grew up in Washington, Olympic Peninsula, Port Townsend. Uh, I was going to have a picture of it, but I can't figure out Google Slides, so. <laughs> um, I grew up there. Um, my grandparents graduated the same uh, place. My graduated from the same high school that my grandparents graduated from, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, had several generations of my mom's side of the family around in town. Um, and it's pretty good. Uh, we lived with my grandparents. Um, I miss my grandpa dearly. He died some years ago, uh, but I think a lot of what I uh, have today is a result of him uh, being the father figure, being the male figure in my life. Um, had some early church experiences. Um, you know, I can remember going to church and doing Sunday school, um, but it wasn't really a big part of our lives. Um, you know, at some point, my family stopped going, but this other family picked me up, and I don't know, I haven't really asked why that was, uh, but it was, it was a thing, and then it wasn't a thing. Um, I went to a, uh, a Christian preschool, kindergarten type deal. Um, don't really have, I have a memory of having to eat a whole tomato in, for lunch. Uh, for a long time, didn't like tomatoes. <laughs> um, had some friends that did Young Life. Um, I don't know if that's a thing within Adventism, but uh, had some friends do that and went, hung out more for the food than anything. Um, also didn't really get it. Um, uh, I think starting about middle school, um, I think... It, yeah, somewhere in middle school. Uh, so for me, that would have been uh, seventh and eighth grade. Um, I think it's changed a little bit uh, since then. Uh, I'm, I'm actually older than I am. Uh, just <laughs> I should say I'm, I'm older than I look, not, not older than I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, 
I lost my three. <laughs> seventh and eighth grade. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, f um, I had uh, a mom who wasn't trying to figure things out for herself, uh, wasn't trying to find meaningful relationships, connections um, in her life. Uh, she might have been able to focus on um, me and my little sister a little bit more, uh, maybe would have taken me to somebody for um, some of the things that I was experiencing. Um, I think if uh, today I probably would have um, been, <laughs> I probably would have been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD and given some pills, probably depression, um, because I, I, even though I was a very bright kid, a very smart kid, I struggled in school. Um, was very unmotivated, didn't care. Um, led to a lot of problems, led to a lot of uh, acting out, um, disciplinary stuff. Um, some of it kind of funny, some of it not. Um, so, you know, school rolls along, uh, coming up to the end of high school, what am I going to do? Don't have a plan, never made a plan, never dreamed of anything really aside from, you know, trying to have the next, you know, high school party in the woods and big bonfires and uh, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I think this is going to be a lot shorter than the conversation you and I had. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, I, there's uh, recruiters coming around high school. Um, and so I, I pick one and I say, sure, auto tech, that seems like a good idea. That's something to do, right? Because you got to do something after you graduate from high school. Um, so I, I sign up. Uh, I move down to Phoenix, Arizona. Um, anybody been to Phoenix? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I lived there for about a year, um, and it was one of the worst years of my life. Um, uh, I began to cultivate um, suicidal thoughts, uh, suicidal ideations. Would imagine myself. Um, I won't. I won't share those with you. Um, I got a real introduction to the real world. Um, I one of. Uh, one of the impressionable moments um, from that time is seen uh, sitting on my porch in the apartment that I shared with some people um, that I went to high school with who were also down, um, is seeing a car drive by. Um, there was a couple in the car, and there's a woman crying hysterically. Um, and the man is yelling at her and telling her that it is his fault that she's crying. and. Um, I think we can deduce uh, some of uh, what's lying under there. Um, and it hit me. Uh, it, was really, it was really impactful, and here it is uh, a little over 20 years later, and I'm, I'm mentioning it um, because it's, uh, it's hard. As it was a hard thing to see as a, as a newly minted 18-year-old. Um, So um, after that, uh, the, um, so I moved to Phoenix uh, with the girl I was dating in high school. Um, and we both, we, we could not get out of Phoenix fast enough. Um, she always wanted to live in California. Uh, I didn't want to live in Phoenix, so we said, let's go. Uh, so to San Luis Obispo we went. Anybody been there? Yeah, it's not bad. Not a bad place. <laughs> Much better than Phoenix. Um, so we were there for a few months, um, and we subsisted off Subway. Uh, that's where I worked. Uh, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Subway, Subway, Subway. Um, for those of you who've never tried the Subway diet, it does not take long to get over it. Um, and after a few months, uh, she talked to uh, a brother of hers who lived in Boulder, Colorado, and said, why don't you come here? I can get us an apartment. You guys can get jobs making 
way more than you're making now. You don't have to eat Subway. So he said, we're there. <laughs> um, so we did that. Uh, started working at Safeway um, all over the store, doing different things. And, um, and it wasn't really a whole lot better. Um, still, you know, there's parties and, you know, yeah, lots of video games at the time. Um, yeah, uh, so the relationship didn't work out. Um, and I moved with some other people that worked in the store. Uh, and then it was more partying, uh, various levels of debauchery. Um, lots of, lots of partying. Um, I'm surprised that, uh, I, things went as well as they did considering. Um, It's somewhere in there. Um, I met a guy, he was the night crew manager. So for those of you who don't know, there's a crew that comes in at night, puts all new stuff or re replenishes the shelves, makes them look pretty for the morning. Um, he was the guy that was in charge of those crews, going through, ordering all, all of the, uh, the products. And, um, and at some point, um, uh, I ended up on his crew and then I ended up living with him Excuse me. Uh, more partying, more debauchery. But the silver lining in this was that he was, uh, he was a fan of hockey. He said, hey, why don't you come play hockey with us? Um, so I did. Uh, I started playing hockey with him and his uh, three sons. And uh, I got very hooked on that. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, hockey's a game played on ice, it's physical, it's fast, um, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so this, this uh, was really good for me. Um, it was one of the things that um, I wished had been in my life as a child. Um, my high school uh, assistant wrestling coach once asked me, he's like, you've got all the talent, you're, you're an athletic kid, but like, you've got no motivation. Like, what is it, where's the fire? What do we need to get the fire? And I said, I don't know. I, th well, I'll say that. <laughs> um, so, uh, while I lived with uh, this guy, Manuel, and his three sons, um, there was less partying because it's kind of hard to party when you're, when you're playing hockey. Um, I've seen some people do it. It's not pretty. Um, so, yeah. Um, hockey for me turned into pretty much a full-time job. Um, if we weren't playing hockey um, um, in our the leagues that we were in, we were going to the parks uh, in Colorado and we were doing pickup hockey. People would come from all over the neighborhood, you know, we'd push the button, the lights would stay on until 11 and we would play. We would play and we would play and we would play. Uh, most nights of the week, weekends, we were playing hockey. Um, and uh, during, during this time, um, uh, I met a guy through hockey who was a big rock climber. He took me rock climbing and um, so I started climbing, which was also good <laughs> because it doesn't leave room for partying and debauchery. Um, and so for a while, my, my life consisted of, uh, my life consisted of hockey and climbing. Um, and, you know, there was work in there because, you know, those things don't pay for themselves. Um, uh, at some point um, in there, 
uh, through work, uh, I met a, met a lady. Um, we dated. Uh, and um, one day, she comes and informs me that uh, she is pregnant, um, but she has decided to terminate it, and her mom is going to take her there uh, to get the procedure done. You know, we talk, um, and, you know, go through options, but she's, she's got her mind made up, and, um, so one day she comes back and she says, it's done. Well, I, uh, for a little bit, you know, it was, it was okay. Uh, and then, uh, I, I think there was kind of a slow, a slow cracking, and eventually uh, my heart and my mind broke. Um, and this, like, you know, what followed was a, a long series of self-destructive patterns. Um, you know, aimlessness, um, hopelessness. Um, yeah, self-destruction, slow self-destruction. Um, uh, you know, needless to say, the relationship did not last. Um, I met someone else who was uh, also into uh, self-destructive behavior, and um, and we did that for a bit. Um, Ended up moving out here. Uh, I worked on a farm. Um, she was trying to uh, work through school to become a nurse. Um, eventually got into nursing school in, in Ashland. Um, so I worked on a farm here, uh, up to McKenzie. Um, and uh, f for a little bit, she was there. Um, we did things, milk cows, grow vegetables. Um, and then, you know, she got accepted into nursing school, went down to Ashland to pursue that. Um, um, and during that time, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, you know, each, each kind of these chunks are, are kind of years long chunks. Um, the, the hockey and climbing was, you know, it was probably four years, five years. Here um, was another couple years. Um, and occasionally I would go down uh, to Ashland to see her, um, see how things are going, mostly fix her car. Um, some, and I would, you know, the, the flip side of that is um, I could use her car to go up to Washington to see my family. I didn't have one at the time because, uh, <laughs> uh, as it turns out, if you make bad choices, you get bad consequences. Um, you know, I've lost my license a number of times for very stupid reasons. Um, you know, um, so you know, I'm, I'm making these trips. Um, I'm going to kind of bring the timeline in a little shorter. Um, so. I'm going up to Washington, seeing my family. Um, I've got a sister that lives in Lebanon. Anybody know where that is? Not the country. The, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I've got a sister uh, and her family live in Lebanon. And uh, um, I'm not really close with a lot of my family. I don't, we don't talk every week. Um, I wish we did, but we don't. Um, So somehow we connected, and um, excuse me, excuse me. Um, so we'd stop by. Um, she did not grow up in any sort of uh, religious family; did not go to church, um, and uh, similarly was often um, uh, rejecting of organized religion, church. Um, I was 
telling James in our, our conversation earlier, I've, I've uh, got some memories of my mom yelling at uh, people coming to knock on the door to, to do hands out and, and later being like, mom, like you're kind of out of control. Like, tone it down. I just, you know. Um, so, you know, my sister, you know, she had gone up and visited her a couple times. Uh, they had a neighbor, uh, they had a, a family that were their neighbors and um, they had gone to church and would often pray and invite them, my sister and her family, to go to church. Um, apparently, you know, God is a drop of water and is persistent and eventually, eventually he wears through. So they go to church, we start visiting them and, uh, you know, I'm surprised, I'm shocked. I'm like, oh, like, you're different. There's something different about you. Um, and I see that. Didn't know what it was. More trips, more trips. She's like, hey, why don't you come to church with us? You know, my, uh, my partner in self-destruction was like, nope, not into it. Uh, I was a little bit more curious, a little bit more open. Uh, so on one of the times I went up to see my family, um, I made sure that I got there on a Saturday. We went to church on Sunday, and afterwards I would leave and go up. And, and uh, I was telling James the first time I was there, I heard the sermon, and I was like, I thought it was some kind of like Truman, Truman Show joke, where I was like, is this guy like, preaching to me like is this is everybody in on this is this is this sermon like for me specifically because he's this guy's nailing it you know uh yes <laughs> um you know and it, it stuck with me uh it was, you know this you know the at the the church my sister went to you know s- kind of a s- similar story guy grew up on the streets doing this and that um and there he was, up in front of a, a big crowd of people, uh, you know, talking about how good God is. Um, but one of these trips, um, at some point, I had um, found myself uh, living on this lady's farm, um, and I was my my role was to develop the farm so that she wouldn't lose it. Um, so it turned out, you know, with taxes and, and stuff, you, you, uh, you get tax write-offs for farmland because it's, it's difficult to, um, it's fairly difficult to turn a profit um, in agriculture. And she did not have any crops aside from thistle and star thistle and earwigs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I'd found myself living at this lady's farm and I'd gone up and seen my folks come back down and, um, you know, I'd gone to church with my sister and her family and was moved by it. And I, you know, was cruising along in this little beater car. Um, and I was just like, you know, it was kind of a, a vague prayer. It was, um, I, nobody had taught me how to pray. Um, I, you know, had, had heard people pray um, at my sister's church, but, uh, you know, it turns out you're pretty awkward the first few dozen times you do it. And I'm driving in the car, and I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm crying because I don't like where I'm at. And I, I'm just like, I don't remember my exact words, but something to the effect of like, I don't want to do this anymore. I see what my sister has and I want what she has, but that's my own. I don't want to be here anymore. And um, just so you know, this is going to be a little weird. Uh, I have not shared this with many people, um, but it's what happened if you don't like it, poo poo. Um, So I'm driving and uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying this, I've got tears streaming down my face, and um, I, <laughs> I 
there's a section of, of I-5 as you're heading south, it makes this really big dip down and then it comes back up the other side. Um, so that place, as it turns out, is right by Oakland. Yes. Um, so as I mentioned to James in our conversation, um, this was significant for me, um, having, you know, this, I found it out on a later trip, this is where it was. Uh, I, I remember the dip, but anyway. Um, so I'm cruising down, about to start going down the hill, and tears streaming, saying my awkward prayer, and there is this hand, this giant hand that comes through the window, and I don't think anything of it, but I take this hand, and whoop, out of the car we go. There we are, and it, is, it becomes very black, and there's these little different colored orbs moving around, and from infinity to infinity is this wrought iron fence that's golden. And just up there, like, cool, this seems totally normal, <laughs> you know? And the next thing I know, I am enveloped in love. Um, and it is the most wonderful thing I've ever felt in my entire life. Um, like inside out, head to toe, completely hugged in love. And I did not want that to stop. I did not want it to stop ever. I, you know, forget about the car, forget about whatever, just let me stay here in this embrace. Um, couldn't happen. Uh, so, you know, the embrace ends. And before me is this luminous being um, who I do believe was Jesus. We have a conversation. Um, back in the car I go. Not that much further down the hill, but whoa, okay, not crashing, not crashing, we're good, what happened? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and I spend, the, I spend the next week just completely stunned. I am dumbfounded, um, in the true sense of the word, dumbfounded. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about it, uh, you know, share this with the lady that I'm living with who points me to somebody who um, might be, <laughs> who's a little bit more um, spiritually minded, um, yeah, well, <laughs> um, and then I, from there, I start, uh, I, I want to know what that was and how I can get more of it. Um, I start going to this lady's church, um, it's a little too, um, woo-woo for me, and, um, and I do some church shopping, and I conclude that I'm not going to find it. It will find me. I will just do my part and be patient. Um, move back here, um, and um, uh, I'm living in my truck, uh, going to school at LCC, um, and this has kind of been a theme throughout, uh, throughout my early adult, um, my early adult life, sleeping in various vehicles for extended periods of time, um, and so I'm, I'm there at LCC, uh, trying to do something with my life, I don't know what, um, but as I've recognized the patterns. Um, it, there gets to be a point where um, trying to do life out of a tent or a vehicle uh, doesn't work with academics. And so I, I begin to tell my teachers during this term, like, hey, this is my situation. Um, so 
just so you know, if I start kind of like sliding off the off the rails, this is why you know why. Excuse me. Um, one of the teachers um, says, "Well, that's kind of rough. Uh, why don't you just put your tent in my backyard till the end of the term, and um, that way you don't have to, you know, break down, break, set up." this and that, and you can focus more on your school and doing what you need to do. So, cool, we're into that. Um, eventually, we, she, a friend of hers uh, moved out, um, bailed on her marriage and whatever, and she said, hey, I've got an idea. Uh, my friend's son has been staying in this house um, it's been foreclosed, but you should stay in it and keep the riffraff out. Stay in a house? Okay. Um, but I didn't actually like it. I had a little school bus. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I parked it in the driveway and I uh, put together bikes out of one of the rooms. Um, just put them together, gave them to people for way too little. And um, did that for a bit, you know, still waiting, still waiting for church, the right people, and, uh, but not finding it, it not finding me yet. Um, one day, uh, she's, she's off on a trip, and I'm house-sitting for her, making sure her cat doesn't die and has a nice, clean litter box, and I hear... And I smile, <laughs> I smile, uh, I smile at this knock. This is a good knock. Um, I didn't know it, uh, but there was a, a, a church starting um, here in the area. And when I opened the door on the other side was uh, a couple of... Um, students in a discipleship program called Arise. Anybody hear of it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, they asked me this questionnaire the whole time. I'm grinning ear to ear because uh, it's, you know, it's like, I know why you're here. I know why you're here. And I say, okay, well, we're, we're doing a church. Uh, would you like to come with us and I said yeah I will be there um, and James helped me do the math on it and that was the the discipleship program of 2014 uh, going through a rise and the church the service that I would attend was the first storyline church um, yes 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 um, I can't say it's been a nice smooth ride um, as one of the disciples, uh, um, one of the students in the discipleship program said, uh, you know, accepting Jesus is easy. Like the rest of it's like, it doesn't get any easier. Like you can, you can accept Jesus, but there's no, there's no thing that happens that makes, um, that makes the hardships of life disappear. Um, and in fact, it might actually make it harder. <laughs> um, so uh, there was Lauren Andrew that knocked on um, on my friend's door, um, which happened to be across the street from the house that I was uh, staying at, um, and just you know through something saying, "Hold your horses," um, I met them. The timing was right. Uh, some people might call it a. divine appointment. That's, and um, so I started going to church. Uh, I ended up meeting my wife, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> um, there. Uh, it turns out that knowing how to fix bikes comes in handy if you, uh, if uh, someone catches your eye who has a <laughs> bike that needs fixing. <laughs> um, well, one thing, you know, through the, so the, through the, through the time, um, through my involvement with Storyline, 
Um, one thing that, that uh, started happening for me for the first time um, was having hopes and dreams of being able to see further down the line than, you know, the season or, um, you know, the week. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's, uh, um, I don't know if you probably all heard the name Jeffrey Rosario. Um, he did a, uh, he did a, a message, a sermon on, um, this, f- this woman in the Bible named Tabitha. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Acts chapter 9. Verse 36 through 40. It's a good story. Um, it's very impressionable. Uh, very impressionable on me. And uh, I'm not sure when he gave this message. It was when Storyline was on uh, 18th. Uh, for those of you who know, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, very impressionable. Um, and this, you know, the story is, you know, she's a seamstress. Um, she she's just quietly doing her thing uh in the background serving god serving serving widows um and she dies and people mourn and a lot of people mourn um <laughs> yeah you should you should listen to it go and go and listen to jeffrey's cuz i'm i'm not going to do it any kind of justice um but it what it did was uh, it gave me hope that there's ways of serving Jesus, there's ways of serving God that are not up here, that are doing the things quietly in the background with devotion, um, doing things steadfast, um, doing things um, without glamour, um, and that's okay. Um, life goes on. I, uh, decide that, uh, well, we, (laughs) we start, uh, growing our family, um, and I, uh, come to the conclusion that if we are going to do this with any kind of success, I should probably not, uh, be a laborer on a farm. Uh, (laughs) free veggies are good, but... (laughs) <laughs> so, um, one of the one of the things that one of the occupations I considered was law enforcement. Being a police officer, wanted to do. My grandpa was a police officer. Rode a Harley back in the I don't know, like the 50s or 60s, something like that. Said it was awful. Um, and there was a um, an officer growing up who um, he did the Dare program uh, for me to little success. Um, and, uh, but he was a great guy. He was a nice guy. Um, he was Officer Daly growing up. Uh, he became Chief Daly after I graduated. Um, he, when I got into trouble, I asked for him to call my mom, uh, and he did uh, because it, I think it kind of lessened the, lessened the, uh, the news a little bit. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to, I was going to, that was, that was my plan. A friend of mine, Joseph, uh, some of you know him, um, amazing guy, super sharp, um, loves Jesus with all his heart, his mind, his soul. Uh, he's been doing this thing called Reboot um, and was like, you should come to Reboot and talk to some people who've been in law enforcement. And uh, I did, um, and I did. And what I found through that experience was, uh, was that I was not there to um, get an inside view of what it was like being a law enforcement officer. Uh, what I ended up doing was starting to, I started to encounter um, what happened uh, as a young man um, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
um, uh, when this girl that I was with, this uh, woman that I was with, had an abortion. Um, which is kind of funny because, you know, I, I think about, not often, but I think about the way God works, and um, I'm always impressed that in the places that we hurt, he finds ways, I should say this is true for me, he finds ways of bringing those back um, so that I can address them and deal with them whether I want to or not. And um, so through this program, uh, I, that's largely what happened. Um, I am not in law enforcement. Uh, <laughs> and um, at the end of the graduation, uh, at, at the end of the program, there's a little graduation ceremony, and we're given little uh, certificates of completion, and um, uh, what I found written on mine was, you know, was this kind of like, really? Like, um, I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I, found it, I found it a little humorous. Um, and it comes from Isaiah 58, uh, and I'm going to share it with you um, because this is um, this is uh, this is what I find myself doing um, in my current occupation. Um, it says, "And if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness, and your gloom will become like midday. And the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places, and give strength to your bones, and you will be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins, and you will rise up in the age-old foundations." Sorry, you will rise up the age-old foundations and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets in which to dwell. So that brings us to now. Um, I don't believe my story is over. Um, and... Uh, if, yeah, I'll just <laughs> it's not over. Um, and thank you for letting me share my story with you.